I've just put um, a tiny bit of masking fluid just on for the whiskers, just using a palette knife. All I did was just dunked it in the, I'll just quickly show you. I just dunked the palette knife into the masking fluid like so. Kind of lean the palette knife on the side and then just kind of dragged it out like so to give me those sort of um, fine, fine lines. Okay, so that's all I did for the masking fluid. So let me just get rid of that. So then first thing we need to do to start off the painting is um, while I wait for that little bit of masking fluid to dry, I'm gonna mix up some color. And this will be sort of the first wash over the whole, over the whole piece. Um, and into that, obviously we're gonna paint all our, all our other colors and the details and that kind of thing. Quite sure why I've got gray in my palette. Let me just scrape that out. Let's just move that. There we go. So then the first colors are gonna be a bit of a mixture. And um, obviously they're not gonna be too strong because we wanna be able to um, work into them. Quite like the sort of the bluey orange thing going on in the reference. So I might, I might stick to that a little bit. Quite like the blue and orange combination. So I'm gonna take some water now with my big, big brush, the hake brush. And I'm going to start to wet the board all over. The only bit I'm not gonna wet is um, the eyes themselves. So I'm gonna leave those dry or try and leave them as dry as possible. So the, what I mean by the eye bit is the actual black bit, <coughs> the marking around the eye. I'm gonna leave that, gonna leave that fairly dry so that we can work into that afterwards. So you'll end up with a, um, a whole page of water and just two white dry bits for the eye sockets themselves. Okay, so let's just get this sloshed on. And I'm gonna kind of let the paint just bleed out on the edges. So I'm not too worried about what goes on at the extremities here. If it just kind of fades away naturally, that's all good. Don't want it all completely painted solid. A bit more water on there because it's drying out. Okay. So let's take some colors now. So I'm going to start off with a bit of um, a transparent yellow or a bit of yellow gamboge, I think it's called, but you could use just um, lemon yellow or something like that. Just a brightish yellow, really. So I'm going to take some of this color. So this is kind of a goldeny, a goldenish brown, browny yellow. And because we've already got water on our on our painting, I'm just going to lay it a little bit flatter. I don't want it to spread too quickly. I'm just going to start to slosh this on in the area, not right to the edges, but in the area where obviously I've got the the orangey brown colours. And it's going to bleed, you know, you're not going to be able to control it 100%. And if it goes into the face, it goes into the face. If it goes into the background, it doesn't really matter. Um, we can always tidy that up afterwards. This is really just to get us some, some first colours on um, and make a stab at what's going on in the picture. So coming round the, around the sort of the white part of the, or the greyish part of the mane. Just gonna tip that up a little bit that way. All the way through the side. Then it actually comes out into the darker part of the hair. Let's take it up a bit higher. There we go. Come down a bit lower. Right, now let's change it to a slightly darker color now. So I'm gonna take some, burnt umber 
So this is just dark brown. Let's just put that in the same bit. A bit of burnt umber. And as you can see, I mean, it's kind of spreading wherever it wants to spread, but it will dry lighter. So we can work into it. So some of this darker brown now. And going a little bit thicker as well, because obviously the, um, the thicker the paint is, the less it's going to spread or the slower it will spread. So let's get some of this in to his mane at the top here. Perhaps some coming around the back. It's quite a dark uh, back section to his body. I just want to get a bit of this color in. And then we can actually bring some of this down and around the mane here. Coming down. And then we're going to go darker again still. So it's a bit scary because obviously we're putting some reasonably dark colors on fairly early on in the painting. Obviously we're going to paint it darker still, but you know, this is watercolor after all, and sometimes that can be a bit scary. But we'll just embrace the chaos today and see what happens. Okay, so there we go. So there's a bit of brown on there. Now then let's go to some um, something a bit darker. I'm going to use some Payne's Grey. I may even put a bit of red in there actually. Yeah, Payne's Grey there. So it goes sort of a darkish purple. So let's take some of this and a bit of crimson or a bit of, uh, if you've got like a permanent rose or something of that nature to make it go a bit purpley. So sort of a dark purple. And then I'm going to introduce that now on the outside of the darker brown part. So it's pretty dark. <clears throat> Especially for this early stage. But as I said, you know, we just want to embrace the chaos a little bit. I might run some water through this in a minute just to get it moving. So it sort of comes all the way down. All the way down. Put a bit in here as well, because it's quite dark under there. Under that part of his mane. And we need to come up higher to cut into some of this, to push it back a bit. Could even drop a few bits up into the here, because it's quite dark on top. Okay, come out a little bit more here and then we'll give that a quick spray just to get it, get it moving a bit. And this all needs to come nice and dark down in this bottom corner. So I'm going to go a bit redder now, a bit more red in it. And I'm going to tip it just very slightly downwards. So it was fairly flat and now I'm tipping it, tipping it kind of downwards. Okay. Great, great. Now I'm going to take a pair, I can find one. I did have some, there's one there. So just taking some water. I'm just going to actually spray that out first because I don't want that mark there. So I'm just going to lose that. Let that edge bleed out a bit more. Just spray around this top edge just to get that edge to um, be a bit more interesting. Lose it down there. Mop that up. So I'm just going to get rid of some of this excess. Got a lot of 
of water flying around here. <clears throat> so just taking it off from around the edges of the, the board, just to sort of tidy it up a little bit. Stop too many run backs. Now I'm going to tidy up in the face a little bit. I mean, there are some yellow notes in the face, so I'm not too bothered about um, it going too yellow in there, but some of the whiter bits, I think I'll just do a little bit of lifting out just with some tissue to um, just keep hold of some of that white uh, in the face, just to keep it a bit cleaner. So it's fairly white there. Uh, where else do we need a bit more? Perhaps a bit on the on across the muzzle, kind of blue across there. Don't think we want to give me a yellow nose. We can lose that. Okay, and perhaps just a teeny bit coming up the side here towards the eye. So these areas are a little bit grayer than they are yellow or orange, I should say, whatever color you want to call it. Sort of a dusky brown. Okay, so now let's just lose this bit of water down here. <clears throat> it's going to be a bit difficult to tip this. Normally, I would probably tip this board to get that to run back a little bit, but because it's stuck down on my easel to keep the pallet on there, it's a bit difficult, so I can't really do that. So I think I'll just leave it to just dry naturally and then um, maybe pull some lighter colours back out in there. Well, I don't mind the sort of darker passage coming in. I think it cuts into all that orange quite nicely, so it might be okay. Right, I'm just looking at my paper just to see how much moisture is left in it. And there's a little bit in these two corners, so I'm actually going to just drop a little bit of colour in there, just while there's enough moisture in it. Uh, let's go with some cerulean, I think. Get some cerulean blue on the go. <clears throat> so I'm going to take a medium, not a massive brush, just a medium sized brush. Mix a bit of this cerulean so it goes slightly green. I want it totally blue, can go a little bit dirty if it wants to. You can put a little bit of the brown in there as well, just to knock it down a little bit. And I'm going to drop that in here just to knock down these whiter areas and let it mix with the color that's already on the painting. And I'm purposely not going right up to the original drawing line, just so that the two colours can sort of creep together naturally. If I make this blue a little bit thicker than the than the yellow that I put on, it will naturally kind of overpower the yellow. And um, help to sort of push it, push it back a little bit, like it's doing here. It's sort of creeping in quite nicely there, giving me a nice soft edge. So a bit more of that blue just in there. Take a little bit of that for this side. Bringing it up to the edge on this side because over here the paint's drying a little bit quicker. So I want to just get the shape of the line in break in a little bit because obviously this is a needs to be a fairly broken edge because it should be hair really so we'll do that just fill in this bit of white a bit more of the main there and then we've got some more of this blue just to go in 
I even put a tiny bit of Payne's gray in that blue as well to have the bottom slightly darker down here. Because down here is darker than the top. Let's put some of this color on. And again, bring it up so that it can kind of push back the yellow a bit and help to um, frame up the face. Help to create the shape a bit better. So there we go, all the way to about there. Perhaps just a little bit more in here, slightly darker. Just for some variation. It's a bit darker up there as well. Okay, now I'm going to let that all dry and let you all. Um, so I'll make a stab at getting some colours in, in and around this eye. Um, and then we may or may not go straight into this. I haven't decided yet. We'll see how this one goes. And then we'll start to look at building up some form around it and maybe the bridge of the nose to start to get this um, part of his face to sort of come forward. So we're going to need to put some some darker colours obviously under the chin to get the, the effect that the chin is in front of the, the mane that's kind of below it. You see in this area it's darker, this is lighter. Um, so that will kind of be the next section, developing those areas. Okay. So I'm going to use um, in the colours, keep it fairly simple. So I'm going to use the Payne's grey again. Let's just mix that into those existing browns. So maybe a bit of Payne's grey and brown together, that might be quite nice to keep it really simple. There we go. <clears throat> Perhaps a little bit of the cerulean blue in there as well. Just so it's not too green, but more brown. So it's sort of um, a warmish, dark gray really is the starting point for that particular color. Now what I'm thinking with this color is that we're going to use it in the darker outer part of the eye. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to put some water into the lower section of the eye um, or, or around the eye really. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop some yellowy colors into the eye first to give us that lighter um, yellowy sort of um, part of the pupil. And then on the outside of that, we'll then start to drop the, um, the darker colors. So for the yellowy colors, I will just use um, a little bit of the transparent yellow again, or the, the um, what's it called, the, 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 the new gamboge, if you or transparent yellow, whatever yellow you've got, or lemon yellow would be just as good, probably even better actually. And I'm gonna put a bit of the um, cerulean blue in there, just to sort of make it slightly green. I don't want it to be too yellow, I want it to have a slight green tinge to it, because there is a bit of greenness in the eye. There we go, so it's sort of a greeny gray. Now, taking a bit of water, so this is clean water now, I'm going to run that into the circular part of the eye over the pupil. The only bit that I'm not going to wet is the little highlight, which is just at the top edge, just there. I've put a little, just made a little marking for the highlight, which is just there, just above the, um, the dark part of the pupil. Just lift a bit of that water out. Take a bit of the color. And if you don't get it dark enough first time, it doesn't really matter. This is just to get us, get us started with the color, a bit more blue, a bit more yellow. And what I'm gonna do is just bring that into the center of the eye and just let that creep out into that moisture. You might need to tease it out a little bit. But really it's just to get us an initial 
bit of color into the pupil, like so. The thing you need to really watch on this is that you don't get a very, very hard edge at the bottom of the eye, because obviously we want it to feel like it's a, um, something very spherical. So I'm just taking a little bit of moisture in the brush, just so it's damp. I'm just gonna run it along that bottom edge just to let it um, evaporate into nothing. So it's very, very soft along that bottom edge. Okay, don't want a line. That's ideally what we want to avoid. And equally, you could do that across the top of the eye as well. So you get a very soft edge. So that when we bring our dark colors into that, <clears throat> we haven't got a fight, we haven't got a fight with trying to lose an edge. That's really what we want to avoid. Okay, now I didn't, now I said I was only going to concentrate on that eye, but because we've got that color there, I'm going to drop some into this eye as well while we're at it. So I'll show you the whole process again. So I take some clean water in a clean brush. I wet the, um, the area of the pupil, the whole thing, including the, the dark center. The only bit I'm not wetting is the highlight, which again is just up here, just above the pupil, uh, the, the dark center. Take some of the browny blue mix, sorry, the yellowy blue mix. Try and keep it roughly the same consistency as you did with the other eye. Otherwise it'll be a lot, lot darker. Take that color and I'm gonna drop it into my moisture. It's a bit stronger. Let's just put a bit more water in there. Put that down a bit stronger than the other eye. And you can always go darker if you need to later on. Um, in this process, but this will just get us the start of those two eyes. Then I'm going to knock all the paint out of that brush. So it's a damp brush now and just run it around the edge just to soften, soften those edges off and make sure it's completely spherical in nature. And that's it. And then we can let those two eyes dry. So the next thing I'm going to do is take the, um, the dark color and I'm going to fill in around the eye. But to do that, I don't want a hard edge now on the outside here. So I'm going to take a bit of moisture again, so some water, and I'm going to run that around the outside of the dark part. So the sort of the, the bit that looks a bit like an eyeliner. I'm putting some moisture on the outside of that. So the outside edge. Let's just do this top edge first of all so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm not going to do the whole thing, just the outside edge. Take some of my dark color, a bit more gray in there actually. And hopefully this eye has dried off enough to allow me to do this. We'll soon find out. And then I'm going to start to drop this in to the shape, which should then creep out a little bit. Oops, put a bit too far there. Creep out a little bit into the um, that moisture that we've just put on. So I'm coming over the top of the eye now, right over the top. Let's just carve that down a little bit more. all the way down and then it actually starts to lighten there a bit. So I'll need to just lighten that off. It comes all the way down around the eye. And on this side, it comes on the outside there. There's a little bit of a gap. It comes all the way underneath the eye as a sort of a line and then it fades out. So now when you, to try and take care of the edges of all that before it dries. So I've just knocked out the moisture. So I dunk it in the water, squeeze out the excess. And then quickly before it dries, I'm gonna run it around the inside edge to soften that into the pupil itself so that we have a very soft, and I'm just trying to use the very tip of the brush 
just the pointy part. Keep it really soft on that in, inner edge of the, um, the dark mark. So do the same over here. So I don't want a line now, I just want it very, very soft. I'm just gonna run the brush just over that edge, just to tease it out a little bit. Get it to soften off. Same in here. And then it's gone a little bit too wide here. So I'm gonna lift out some of that. It's got a bit too big. I'm just taking my brush and just running it along the edge of that um, paint that we just put on. Lift out a little bit of this as well. And then before that line dries, I'm just gonna use some water, just a bit of water, just to pull that color out because it actually lightens as the dark mark um, comes out into the fur itself. So I'm just using some water here rather than adding any extra color. I'm just allowing the, uh, the paint that's already on the painting to take care of the actual color. Just tweak, tweak the edge of this a little bit. Just want that to come up and out. So I might need to put a little bit of white back in there at the end. Just gonna fiddle with this edge here a little bit more, just to pull the color out a little bit more. And then I'm gonna drop a little bit of blue, so some cerulean blue. Oops, if I can clean the brush off that is. A bit of cerulean blue just along the, in parts along the bottom edge of this eye. And again, not too much, just a, just a hint of it. As it comes out into the main whiter part of that um, area. And then I can just follow that down into the nose. Okay. So it's not perfect, but it's not too bad. So I'll just tidy that edge up a little bit. It's possibly got a little bit fat through here. I would have rather kept that a little bit tighter, but it's all part of the um, painting process, I suppose. Push it around a little bit. Okay, and I'm just gonna lose this edge here because I don't want an edge there. Just doing a little bit of lifting out and then I'll leave that alone. So obviously we're gonna darken up the actual eye itself. We can actually probably do that a little bit now. We can put a bit of brown. Let's make it slightly browner. So while this dark is still a bit wet, I'm gonna run some brown into that edge of the eye to suggest that we've got some shadow over the eye and also that it is kind of a glassy surface. We can even take that same dark and run that into our very dark center of the eye as a very soft, very soft center. And I can come back and tidy all that up or make it slightly darker later on. Just gonna run a bit of that brown just down here, the bottom of the eye. It's a bit darker there. Unfortunately, the eyes, if you want to get them really nice, they do take a little bit of fiddling. Um, 
because obviously they are Um, you're trying to create a sort of a shiny surface. And that means that we can't really have too many hard edges. We have to sort of try and take care of them as we're going along. Right, so out of that, I'm now going to take a bit of brown. So this is just the burnt umber. And I'm going to take another brush that's going to have some water in it. Tilt the board slightly away from me. And I'm going to start to look at getting some browns in and around the, um, the sort of the eye socket. And the reason I'm tilting it away is because if I tilt it to me, this water is going to run into that eye and I want it to sort of run away from the eye. So I'm going to take my brown and just drop it into the edge and let it creep up into that water. Uh, we'll do the same thing, the same thing here. So we'll take some brown, we'll coax that around and start to form some shapes in the fur that's around the um, around the eye socket. <clears throat> and then we've got some of that brown also on this very edge of the eye here. Let's just drop a bit in there. And then I'll wash that away. So this is the side of his head. So we can actually start to wash some of this out. Let's make that slightly browny grayer, because it's sort of a bluey gray type color, his face fur. And obviously I don't want to use white to make the gray. So I'm just going to use a variation of the Payne's gray and <clears throat> with some blue and some browns in it. And then we can just dilute that with some water just to spread it out, get it to start moving around, around the face. Let's pull it this way a bit a bit more of that color. So we sort of got this cheekbone, or what looks like a cheekbone. Um, developing. So just putting some water down first and then just manipulating the paint with the water. So just adding a little bit more water to pull that color out. And let's drop into a bit more brown, perhaps even a little bit of red in there, actually. Browny red kind of color. Just drop some of that in there as well, just for a bit of difference within the, these paler colors. So I'm going to continue this across to the cheek, just adding a bit more water each time pulling that color out um, into the surrounding area. So I need a bit of blue now. So a bit of cerulean. I'm gonna drop some of that in here as the face starts to turn the corner. So we'll have some cerulean blue on this edge. Because what we're trying to say is we've gone around a corner, then we've gone flat, and then we're going back up again into the muzzle. So we're trying to create the illusion that we're changing surfaces and direction. That's the idea. Let's just wash some of this out. Just putting a bit of water on there just to lose some of those edges. So a bit of Payne's gray into that blue. So it's slightly darker and then it kind of comes down just touching it letting the water do the work so a bit more moisture a bit more paint just touching it into that moisture to sort of allow it to come off the brush 
I'm not really trying to um, be too aggressive with it. Keep it fairly, fairly um, gentle in the application. Just bring a little bit more dark in the eye there. Okay, and then we start to go slightly brown again. So I'm gonna wash that blue and gray out back into the brownie colors. Again, reasonably thick with the paint because obviously we're putting moisture on and then we're touching the painting with the, with the brush. So I want some good, good um, amount of paint to come off. So we get a good color hit. Otherwise we just end up with, with water, very wishy-washy. So let's now develop in to this next section. We come around and then back towards the eye itself. So that needs to be a bit more gray now. So back to the Payne's gray and we can drop some of that in and these are all just like mini wet and wet washes but in a you know over a smaller kind of over a smaller area so i'm sort of just putting the water down um in a in a sort of a shape to try and control the drawing and then allowing the other brush to sort of just bring the color into it um, just take your time, you know, you don't have to rush. You can just do it nice and slowly like this and just piece by piece, almost like a jigsaw. You just figure out where the changing colors are. Like here, it goes a bit more, a bit browner. And down here, it's a bit browner. And obviously, if you end up bumping into dry paper, so you start getting lots of lines, then you just want to take your brush with a bit of moisture in it, just tickle away the edges. Obviously not the end of the world if you get a couple of lines because we are trying to suggest hair here, but equally we don't want it to get too, too broken up. Um, otherwise it's very hard to then control it. So now I'm gonna continue along this edge of his nose until we hit the nose itself. So using the brown again, drop it in. Just allow the brown to sort of creep up to that other patch of color I've just put on. And that continues all the way to the um, nostril edge. I'll just use the other hand, it's going to be quicker. So, comes a little bit further down and then we hit the nostril edge and then we're into this sort of whitey gray sort of color. I'm sure it's got a little bit dark there. Let's bring the dark out a bit further. Okay. Soften that edge off there. Then I can go slightly grayer again. So coming down this passage of the nose, it goes a bit darker as we come in here. Let's jump back into our grays. It's just the paint gray again. Drop some of that in. Now I don't want a complete line all the way from the eye down the side of his muzzle because that would just be a bit too heavy so i'm just going to just allow a little bit of gray in there and then i will uh, just let the imagination take care of the rest so then we're into the side now or coming into the side of the the bulbous part of the um not sure what you call this, the, the muzzle or whatever you call it. A bit where the whiskers stick out, <laughs> let's call it that. So to show that up, because obviously that's quite white or quite light, I actually need to start to come in and develop some darks or darker colors. 
sort of through the main here. So let's have a stab at that. And because I've masked this out, our whiskers, I don't need to worry about what, keeping those. So I'm just gonna put some moisture now back down through the edge of this um, piece that we're gonna bring some darker colors into. And kind of come down to the mouth there. Dip into the, uh, the brown, bit of gray in it, or even a bit of blue in there. So it's not too orangey brown. I want it to have a little bit of um, <clears throat> a slight variation in the browns. And then I'm going to take that and start to develop this area. So again, just as a sort of little mini wet and wet wash, dropping in this color where I think it needs to go. Let it creep out. I'm gonna leave some of these nice yellow sort of showing through. Um, don't wanna lose all of that. But equally we need to get some darks on here, otherwise it's gonna be very pale, the whole painting. So let's pull this out a bit more. So just with water, just allowing the water to let the paint creep out. And I might even dip into a little, little, bit, little bit of blue, just for some variation in these sort of browns. A bit more blue. Now we're coming down to the edge of the mouth now. So we could actually link these two colors together because this is dark, this is dark. So we can allow a little bit of linking to happen. So let's continue to let that bleed out. Might even use my spray bottle there just to encourage the paint to move a bit more. So I'm just using my hand just to stop it going over the, back into the face. <clears throat> let's pull a bit of dark. Let's put some of that red back in there. It's more purpley. It's sort of a purpley gray. Not quite as dark as that. Bit of blue in it, cerulean to lighten it touch. Okay, that'll do. And I can then start to address some of this dark now in the mouth. So the mouth itself is, the shape of the mouth is dry, but obviously where we're coming down into these hairs in his chin, and also the hairs in the lower part of the muzzle. I wanna just put a bit of moisture just to allow the paint to be able to creep out a touch once we get there. Um, that might be a bit too much actually. Let's lift some of that out. And obviously buy us a bit of time with our modeling. Go a bit bluer. So let's bring this down a bit more. So we've actually got the mouth shape then, and that can come a little bit further over. And obviously, then we start to hit the moisture again. And it sort of comes down to about there. I'll just let that bleed away. So I'm just gonna bring some water up to the edge of that mouth area, just to let the paint creep down to the lower part of the chin. Bring a bit more blue into that. Oops, it's gone very gray there. Let's clean that off. 
get a bit more cerulean, a bit of ultramarine. Just going to bring a touch of that into that lower part of the mouth, or the, the hair is just down in here. And then pull that out. Keep it soft again. <clears throat> And then equally, I'm going to soften off this part of the shape and also this part of the shape. <clears throat> Just tidy that up a bit. Okay, and then a bit more dark the central part towards the nose or the nostrils. Then I can start to just keep, use the brush to draw with now. And then I'm gonna to start to draw in, just softening the edge as I go so that it doesn't get too crisp. So to just block in the, um, the basic shape of the of the nose. Just bring those two shapes together. Um, not worrying about any variation at this stage, just trying to get the shape right or as close as I can to what I think it should be. And then let's just soften off some of these edges. And then I'll stop there and you can all catch up on what I've done so far. Let's just soften off this top edge because that is quite soft across there. It's just a bit more color in here. Okay, let's let that dry then while I give you some time to have a go at that. Just tidy these edges up. time. Okay, so I'll give you sort of another five, 10 minutes just on that piece. And then um, I'll uh, do another section. Whether we get it totally finished today um, is anybody's guess. I may have to finish it off for the video. But at least you'll have a good idea about where we're going with it. Um, if you want to carry it on at home. Let's just tidy up some of this moisture. A little bit more light in the nose there. Okay. So I'm going to give that a quick dry and as I say, right, then let's make a stab at the, um, the other eye or a start at the other eye at least. So we're going to add a bit of our moisture up and round the edge of the dark area. Can even bring a little bit of moisture into these areas as well, because they're all gonna have some browns and those sorts of colors come into them. So I'm gonna start it off with the browns this time. Let's just lay it a little bit flatter. Need a bit more moisture in there when we do that. So let's just put a bit more moisture in and around the eye. Take the brown and start to populate some of this with the browns. Bit of brown down in there. Going to use some, use the brush now just to push that around a little bit. 
softening it off in places. A bit more brown actually. Just up in here. Just get that to creep out a little bit more. Because obviously the fur is going in an upwards direction here. As it kind of comes up and over and then meets the other side. So we'll just coax that out. And again, over here, it's kind of going up and over the eye. So we'll just pull all these colors out and around the eye socket. And then on the under eye, coming down here, it sort of follows down. So we can take some of our grays. Got water in there, little brownie greys. Start to bring a bit of that in here, and again, just take some water, coax that around. Make it a little bit wider. That start coming down the muzzle area. Because we're into sort of browns down in here. <clears throat> so plenty of water. Even bring that up the side of the face there. A bit more brown. It's be pretty soft, not too dark as we're coming in this wash. So just being a little bit careful not to get, not let it get too heavy. And also we don't really want too much of a line coming down here. So keep that fairly soft as well. And a bit more moisture on the around the nose there. And then we can go slightly more yellow and brown. It's quite a lightish bit of fur here. But notice I'm trying to, even though the paint is not really staying as a stroke, in my in my head, I'm still trying to paint it in the direction that I think the the fur is going because that all helps with the um, the way that you're sort of trying to imagine the surfaces within your painting so it's a good idea to try and get in the habit of doing something like that in order to um, enhance your own understanding of what's going on because I think I've said before it's very difficult to paint something if you don't know what it's actually doing so I'm just doing a little bit of lifting out here just softening that off up through there <clears throat> let's take these warmer browns a little bit of burnt sienna in that on the edge of the nose here, as it kind of comes down and around that nostril. And then down into the, starting to form the lower part of this bit where the whiskers come out. So we'll just pull out little bit of that burnt sienna down into this whisker area. Just some of these orangey or browns. Put the color down, just manipulate it with some water. And then just soften that edge off. 
Okay, so coming back up to the eye then, just gonna drop a bit of that same warm brown off the edge of the eye here. Just to finish off this, well not finish off, but just to give the uh, idea that those hairs carry on down. Bit more color, pull it out. Okay, let's get into the eye now. So back to our uh, brownie grays. So it's the burnt, um, burnt umber and the Payne's gray together. So I'm gonna to start to carve in the shape. It's a bit too light, let's go a bit darker. Might be a bit too wet still, let's try it. Might have to carve that back a bit in a minute. I'm just trying to avoid getting too much into that wet area that's already on there. Don't mind it, it touches a little bit because obviously we want a nice soft, soft edge, but don't want it to get too, too big, the dark part. Um, so that sort of comes down. And then it comes forwards, and then we get this sort of little shape around the eye, just here. And then we can soften all that off. So taking our moisture brush, we'll just tickle the edges now. So not putting too much water into this, just with a damp brush. I'm just, again, going around the edges like I did on the first eye, on the left eye. Just manipulating the edges to keep it nice and soft and also to kind of blend the color a little bit into the existing color that we've already got on the painting. Help it to um, work together. Just pull that out a little bit more. Okay, and I'm going to put a little bit of, um, tiny little bit of burnt sienna, not too much. Just while that paint's wet, Going to drop a tiny bit of burnt sienna into the eye there, into those darks, and also a little bit on perhaps on this side where it's dark. Okay, now we can pull out the bottom part of that eye shape now with some um, cerulean, find a cleanish bit of palette, bit of water in it. I'm just going to pull this out now, not too much water. So just using a bit of cerulean and some water, just going to tease out this lower part of the eye. Bled a little bit there, but I'm not too bothered about that, I think. Just adds a bit of interest. So continuing to pull this color out with the blue and the water. So we sort of get this shape that comes around. And then on the outside of that, we can use some, some brown again, or brownie grays, I should say. Let's put a bit of that yellow into the purple because that will make it even more gray. Bit more water, don't want it too dark. And then I'm going to start to bring that just as a very light wash under the eye and over towards the section we've just painted. 
can even bring a little bit of that into there. And again, soften and work it together. Too light here, I don't want it totally white. Still keep it quite light, but not white. <clears throat> okay, I'm not too bothered about the fact the shapes aren't 100% right, but I quite like the way the, the, the paint's bleeding there, so we'll leave that. I'm not going to play with it. Uh, let's get a bit more dark into this left eye in the browns because it's a little bit too light on this side now. Just take some more of that initial brown. Just the burnt, burnt umber. Just to strengthen this up a touch. This will help to give the, oops, the, um, the furs in this area a little bit more strength. Okay. I don't think I'm gonna to manage to get all of this painted today. So I'll do another five minutes and then I'll do a quick round, see how you're all getting on. Um, and then also ask you whether you want to continue this after Easter or you want to start something new. So let's just finish off this edge there. Just bring a bit of that brown into this other eye. Again, just helps to work those colors or transition those colors, I should say, into the surrounding. Um, what else can we do? Let's get into the under part of the main. We said we were gonna try and do that as well. So let's do a little bit of that before we stop. So a bit of moisture again, under the chin here. Ideally using clean water. We'll start to bring that up into there. Make this a little bit larger. And again, the furs are sort of, or well, the hair is sort of coming down and around. So let's try and suggest that a little bit. So using the tip of my brush, I'm gonna, cause this, this bit of the paper is dry. So I'm actually gonna cut in to give the suggestion of some of the hair here, but then obviously underneath that where it's wet, the paint will just run and go wherever it wants. So let's just add a bit more, um, a little bit more Payne's gray into that. Just to darken it slightly more, that might be a bit too dark. Let's go a bit more orange, red, a bit more brownie red. There we go. So let's continue that and do a bit more cutting in into that area. So just using the very, very tip of the of the brush, coming up into the let's go a bit bluer. Up into this area where the whiskers are. And then we can allow that to just creep a bit more water because it's not quite so dark in this area. So just adding a bit more moisture into this paint will allow it to um, be less dark. And then let's just pull this out and then we can just have a break. So let's do that. Let that paint just run naturally. Just gonna spray the bottom out. So 
just so I don't get a hard line. And there we go. 